Warriors, Bounty Hunters, Conquerors, Mandalorians. There are a great number of factions and organizations within the Star Wars galaxy, from the Jedi to the Sith and the Republic and so on, but perhaps none of these have such a drastic and remarkable history as the Mandalorians. From an early band of conquerors, they eventually became the greatest threat in the galaxy, turned into the foundation for the army of the Republic, and even turned to peace. There is a lot to cover in this video, so let's move right along. The first Mandalorians were all part of the Taung species of humanoid aliens, native to the planet of Coruscant. The Taung were raised as warriors from birth and glorified combat. They continually battled the human ancestors on Coruscant, and at one point, after a volcanic eruption blocked out the sun, the Taung referred to themselves as Warriors of the Shadow. Eventually, however, the humans managed to drive the Taung off of Coruscant, and they fled to the Outer Rim. Here they remained for millennia, until one of them, who would come to be known as Mandalore, meaning Soul Ruler, led the Taung to a new planet with a lush ecosystem and no intelligent life. The dominant species on the planet were the humongous creatures known as Mythosaurs, until Mandalore I led a group of crusaders and wiped out the population. The Taung named the new planet Mandalore in honor of their leader, and took on the name of Mandalorians from henceforth. The Mandalorians would build their empire across Mandalore and nearby systems, and the Mandalorian Crusaders would gain a reputation as the most skilled fighters in the galaxy. The Crusaders would wear special armor unique to each warrior, traditionally made from near-indestructible Mandalorian iron, and held to a strict code of honor. The Mandalorians would continue to conquer planets, stretching outward from their home, and many would join the Mandalorians rather than be exterminated. As time went on, the Mandalorians continued to welcome newcomers into the ranks if they impressed them, and the Mandalorians became more than just another name for the Taung. A new leader, Mandalore the Indomitable, replaced the old one, and during their conquest the Mandalorians took over a species possessing a number of war droids. This species received some assistance from the Republic, but not enough to save them. The Mandalorians defeated the species, and took the war droids for themselves, as well as using some of the reptilian species as war mounts. Continuing to conquer planets and moving toward the deep core of the galaxy, the Mandalorians caught the attention of a Sith Lord, Ulic Keldroma. Ulic went to Mandalore the Indomitable and dueled him, handily defeating him. In the aftermath, Mandalore swore allegiance to Ulic and his master, Exar Kun, thus making the first alliance between the Mandalorians and the Sith. The Mandalorians would join Exar Kun in his war against the Republic, quickly invading Coruscant, returning the original Mandalorians to their ancient homeworld. Although the sudden invasion shocked the Republic, the war did not end up going well for the Sith or the Mandalorians. Following a disastrous defeat on the planet of Onderon, Mandalore the Indomitable ordered a retreat to the nearby moon in the hopes that they would lose their pursuers in the dense jungles. Mandalore was separated from the Crusaders in the retreat, and was quickly devoured by some of the native beasts. The Crusaders searched for him in the jungle, and one eventually found his mask, becoming the new Mandalore. During the following 30 years, known as the Restoration Period, the galaxy began rebuilding after the devastation from the Great Sith War. Commerce and exploration continued once again, and the Republic began rebuilding its military. The Mandalorians, under the leadership of the new Mandalore the Ultimate, also began rebuilding their clans. Mandalore the Ultimate began aggressively recruiting from all alien species he could, with few remnants of the original Taung species remaining. In the hopes of forming a massive army to take revenge on the Republic, the Mandalorians created a much more uniform set of armor for their soldiers, and the military was known as the Neo-Crusaders. The Mandalorians continued to conquer planets in the Outer Rim, controlling a territory larger than the huts within the span of a decade. The Republic were aware of the growing conquests of the Mandalorians, but were wary to enter into another large-scale war so soon after the last. 
Roughly 30 years after the end of the Great Sith War, however, the peace was broken for the Republic as the Mandalorian struck out in force. Quickly taking over a number of Republic-controlled planets in the Outer Rim, the Mandalorians moved inward towards the Deep Core. On one Republic planet, the military placed their defenses within the cities in the hopes that the Mandalorians would not attack civilian populations. Mandalore the Ultimate decided this was a defense without honor, and nuclear bombarded the planet, destroying 27 population centers. Little seemed to stop the Mandalorians as they swept across the Republic, overwhelming their fragile military. Unfortunately for the Mandalorians, however, two Jedi Knights named Revan and Malak rallied hundreds of Jedi and the remaining Republic military into a counterattack. Revan, in particular, masterminded a number of victories for the Republic, and the Mandalorians were pushed back to the Outer Rim. Finally, Revan would face off against Mandalore the Ultimate in a duel, slaying the leader of the Mandalorians, and leaving most of the Mandalorian fleet destroyed. The Mandalorians surrendered unconditionally. In the aftermath of the Mandalorian Wars, Revan stripped the Mandalorians of their armor, weapons, war droids, and took the mask of the Mandalore, meaning no new leader could be declared. This caused the Mandalorians to scatter across the Outer Rim, with many of the former warriors becoming mercenaries, bounty hunters, gladiators, or pirates. In the years that followed, Revan became Darth Revan, and began a Jedi civil war along with Darth Malak. During the war, Revan lost many memories of his life, but after helping the Jedi defeat Malak, Revan ended up returning the Mask of Mandalore to the Mandalorians. With the mask in hand, one of Revan's companions was appointed the new Mandalore, Mandalore the Preserver. Mandalore the Preserver would begin to unite the clan once again, but the damage was done, and the clans would remain fragmented for nearly three centuries. When the Sith Empire returned to battle the Republic, they hoped to recruit the Mandalorians for their war. Unfortunately for them, most Mandalorians refused their offer. The Empire decided to turn a Mandalorian gladiator into their pawn. Drugging his opponents and giving him a crowd nickname of Mandalore, the gladiator swept through the ranks and rallied the Mandalorians to his name. This new Mandalore, later known as Mandalore the Lesser, was quickly killed in a duel by another warrior, who would come to be known as Mandalore the Vindicated. He would continue the uneasy alliance with the Sith Empire, but other fragments of the Mandalorians would fight for the Republic instead, as mercenaries. Years would go by, with the Mandalorians eventually breaking away from the Sith and fighting against them, but as the Mandalorian army continued to grow, the Republic became concerned once again and sought to crush them. As the Mandalorian sector was devastated by the Republic forces, a new faction rose. This faction, the New Mandalorians, believed that the best hope for the future of the Mandalorians was to act through peace and tolerance. The planet of Mandalore became controlled by the New Mandalorians and their grand cities, and any that followed the old traditions were banished to the moon of Mandalore. Those outside of the New Mandalorians became mostly split between those that wished for the barbaric conquests of old and those that lived as highly paid mercenaries. Thus, the Mandalorian Civil War began, mostly between the mercenaries known as True Mandalorians and the other faction known as Death Watch. A young Mandalorian named Jango Fett got caught up in the war, watching both of his parents be murdered by members of the Death Watch and rescued by the leader of the True Mandalorians. The Civil War continued for years, with Jango eventually leading the True Mandalorians. In the end, the Death Watch won the war after manipulating the Jedi Order to assist them, and Jango was sold into slavery. Jango escaped, however, and killed the leader of Death Watch. Jango chose to depart from his people and became a bounty hunter instead. Jango would go on to be recruited to be the template for a clone army. This army, created for the Republic, but secretly by the Sith, was then composed entirely of Mandalorians, and Jango would pass on much of Mandalorian culture to the troopers, as well as design their armor. In addition, he requested a single clone for himself, with none of the genetic modifications of the troopers. This clone was raised as Jango's son, and was named Boba. The new Mandalorian government would become the dominant faction of Mandalorians, 
but the Death Watch faction did not disappear, and would rise to combat this new pacifistic government. To do so, they allied themselves with Count Dooku and the Confederacy of Independent Systems during the Clone Wars. The new Mandalorians decided to be neutral during the wars, costing them much of the Republic's support against Death Watch. The new Mandalorian government was eventually toppled, but rather than returning to their roots, the new Mandalore turned back to the teachings of the true Mandalorians. Jango Fett was killed at the beginning of the Clone Wars, and his son Boba went on to become the galaxy's most famous bounty hunter. As the Clone Wars winded down, and the Mandalorians were continued to be allied with the Separatists, Darth Sidious planned an ambush against the Mandalorian commandos, almost wiping them out entirely. After the war ended and the Empire was born, Sidious seemed to forgive the Mandalorians for siding against the Republic. Sidious would eventually show his true colors, however, and take over the planet of Mandalore, commandeering the mining operations there and enslaving most of the population. With the death of the Empire not long after, the Mandalorians regained their freedom, and an aging Boba Fett would become the new Mandalore of a mercenary army. Like many aspects of Star Wars lore, many pieces of history have been omitted from this video. Overall, however, it should paint the Mandalorians as a proud clan of many different peoples throughout history that have seen more war than anyone else. Well, in the end, it doesn't seem that war propelled the Mandalorians to any new heights, they always maintained a very strong reputation of being the best warriors in the galaxy. Defeating countless force users throughout the ages using martial skill, combined with cutting-edge armor and weaponry, the Mandalorians have certainly earned their recognition.